Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jerry. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on adaptive layout. In this part of the series, we'll look at how to customize the position and size of our views for different size classes. We'll use Interface Builder to add new constraints and uninstall existing constraints based on size class. Let's get started. This is the app that we'll be working with for the next few tutorials. You can see that in portrait orientation, it shows a vertically stacked layout. But this layout doesn't work very well in landscape. Even if we fix the label clipping, maybe made the top image smaller to make more room, or reduced the font size so that the text would fit, we still have a bunch of unused space on the side and a pretty crowded layout vertically. Here's what it'll look like by the end of this tutorial. Adaptive layout allows us to define constraints that apply only to a certain size class. So we'll adjust to a side-by-side -side layout in vertically compact environments. Remember, these are actually the same views in the same storyboard, just in different positions with different constraints. When designing your app, you should add your constraints at the most generic size class possible. The idea would be if you could get a layout that made sense 100% of the time in the any any size class. But if that were always possible, we wouldn't need adaptive layout, would we? But once you have the majority of your layout defined in the base layout, then you can add tweaks to the more specific size classes. When you switch the Interface Builder Editor to another size class, you may want to uninstall a constraint. The constraint is still there, but it's just uninstalled or disabled for that particular size class. You'll see it grayed out in the document outline and in the View's Size Inspector. And if you select the constraint and inspect it directly, you'll notice an installed checkbox that shows which size classes it's installed in. If you select a constraint in the size inspector and press delete, the constraint is just uninstalled in the currently selected size class. But if you select the constraint in the document outline and press delete, it will be deleted. When you add a new constraint to a specific size class, the constraint is only added for that size class. Thinking of the subclass hierarchy model again, that means it will only apply to that size class and to its more specific derived size classes, if any. But it'll still be uninstalled in the more generic size classes going up the chain. For example, if you added a new constraint to the any width compact height size class, then that constraint would also apply to the regular width compact height size class and the compact width compact height size class. But if you moved up the chain to any any, you'd see that the constraint uninstalled and grayed out. This is the app that we'll be using for the next few demos. It's a weather app created by Sam Davies for the session that he did at RW DevCon. And if we just build and run this on an iPhone 5S, you can see that it's got this image just to show this sort of a representation of the current state of the weather and then a couple of labels showing the location and the current temperature. If we rotate this to landscape, you'll see it's got a couple of issues. It's reduced the size of the image to make some more space, and but the label's still overrunning its container and it just doesn't look quite like we what we want. But there's all this space over on the side, and if we could use that, that'd be great. So rather than trying to get this to work in a compact height by reducing the size of the image even more or reducing the font size of the labels, Let's take advantage of the space that we have over here and create sort of a side-by-side -side layout where the image is over on the left-hand side and all this information is over on the right-hand side instead. All right, let's switch back over to our storyboard and let's look at that image. So if we look at the size inspector, we have the constraints that are defined for this vertical layout. And we want to adjust those constraints for the side-by-side -side layout. The size class that we want to adjust it for is a compact height size class. If the height is compact, we want to use the horizontal space instead of the vertical space. So we'll switch to that size class. And we don't really want any of these constraints in that size class to be defined. So we can just click on them and press delete. And you'll see it's graded out, it's still here, but it's just uninstalled in this size class. Let's uninstall the rest of them. And if I double click on one of these, so we can look at the details of the constraint, 
you can see now it shows these two checkboxes for installed. And the first one is the generic one for the any any size class. And you can see that it's still installed in the any any size class. But in the size class that we're currently in, the any width compact height size class, the uninstalled checkbox is unchecked. So it's not going to be installed in that size class. Okay, the other view that we want to edit is this background container view for all the rest of this information, and that's this shaded view we've got here. So let's just drag this to approximately where we want it to be. Okay, so we want the shaded view to be on the right hand side. And let's look at the existing constraints on that view. The trailing space of the super view is going to stay the same. Uh, the leading space to the super view, we don't want that to be what it was before, so we'll delete that. And the bottom space of the super view, that'll stay the same. We want a constraint now between this container view and the top. And so we'll go ahead and add that. Just want it to be zero from the top, very top of the view. And then we also want it to be 50% of the width of the view. So let's just drag from the shaded view to the super view and we'll create an equal width constraint. And then we'll go edit that constraint. We want the shaded view width to be equal to 50% of the super view width. Now sometimes when you create this constraint, Xcode will create it in the other order. So you'll see something like this. The super view width is equal to the shaded view width. If that's what you see, you just need to reverse those two items. And the multiplier should just be 0 0.5. And again, this means that the shaded view width will be equal to 0 0.5 times the super view width, or 50% of the super view width. Okay, now that we've defined the constraints on this view, let's just update the frames for it. We'll select this shaded view, and then we'll just update its frames. Now, we want to drag the image to be a standard distance away from that view and from the margins. Okay, now that we have this dragged to where we want it, we can define some constraints on it. We'll just create constraints on all four edges. And then when we update all the frames in the view controller, things look like we expect them to. Now, if you look in the size inspector, we have the grayed out constraints that we had defined on the any any size class, and then we have these new constraints that we have defined in the any width compact height size class. And I want to show you this filter at the top. And by default, it's set to all, and it'll show you all the constraints that apply to this view. But you can narrow it down to just the constraints that apply to this size class. If, if there's just too many in that view for you to see what's going on, then you can filter it down to just this size class, and, and it'll show just those constraints. Okay, let's take a look at this in the preview editor. And let's just make a little bit of room here. So now here on the four inch iPhone, we still have our top and bottom layout and everything looks great, the great use of space. And if we rotate it, you can see instead of having this really squished vertical uh, layout, but, but lots of unused space in the horizontal direction, now we've used our space a lot better. We've got the image over on the left side and, and we can still show all the information we were showing before without having to reduce the font size and without it all being crowded. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we'd like to leave you with the challenge. You'll notice that there are two buttons in the interface that are stacked on top of each other. And that might make sense in a portrait orientation where you have a lot of vertical space. So your challenge is to do something similar to what we did in the demo and have those buttons appear side by side in a vertically compact environment. You'll find all the details in the attached challenge document, along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.